there are other ways to bring that to our attention. We want to give everyone who here from this part. So this is good one. If this is good one. We also ask you not to clap or make any comments, either while an individual is speaking or after a speaker finishes, as this slows down the process. If you want to speak tonight, we ask that you fill out a card that you give us your name and address for our records. And these cards, um, I believe Mary Beth and Libby have extras. Anyone else before we start? Okay, as stated earlier, you should not expect us to reply to your remarks, although we may ask you a question as a board, we will not take any action tonight in response to issues you raised during this discussion. At this time, I'd like to call up Melanie Green. She is here to discuss the Centers for Advanced Study. She lives at 210 Garden Harbor Drive in Lexington, 29072, and she is representing herself as a taxpayer. So, Ms. Green, there she is. Good evening. My name is Melanie Green. I am a resident of the town of Lexington. I am a state certified educator and also an advocate. Uh, I'm for the chance to speak briefly with you um, this evening and to consider the public before you. Um, first, I want to commend you for the work that you are doing in Lexington School District 1 as you are preparing a new generation of leaders uh, for us. I was thrilled especially to hear about the advanced, <laughs> sorry, about the advanced uh, centers for advanced studies that have been and our plans are in the process of being developed, um, which gives students the skills needed to compete, contribute, and succeed locally and globally. Um, I think the goal for sophisticated learning is definitely commendable and something that we can all be proud of. Uh, such goals, you will, will agree, um, apply to every child in our community. Um, clearly, the flyers and the website information state that, um, especially in specifically the World Language Centers are for global education, <coughs> the program is open to all sophomores and juniors and seniors in Lexington School District 1. And so my request before you is that since all Lexington School District 1 children affect us locally and globally, that the school board would consider um, uh, this request that a few, lot, few slots be opened up for homeschool students um, uh, just to participate in those centers and to participate in those exciting opportunities that um, have been uh, placed before uh, the children of school district one. Um, after researching the state code of laws and contacting the legal department of the state department of education, there's evidence that each individual school district um, in the state of South Carolina holds the power to make those decisions, which is why I'm here before you today. Um, I have talked to many different people trying to get information. And every uh, person I talk to says, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. I talked to uh, several different people who are in charge and everyone so I, I think uh, I can tell that the authority lies with you. And um, since these programs are new and developing, we have the request of this citizen that policies for the centers of advanced study include giving homeschool students an opportunity to participate. Um, my idea is that the Center for Advanced Studies are a great program that are meant to uh, influence the entire community, and that includes uh, families that are homeschooling their students. And I believe that this would be a benefit for the entire community and all of our Thank you. Well, thank you, Ms. Green. Anyone else would get wishing to address the board? Okay, at this time, we'll turn the, uh, to agenda item 9.0, which is reports and action items from the executive session. Board, do I hear a motion to approve 22 <coughs> certified recommendations for the 2012-2013 school year? Madam Chairman, I submit. Do we have a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Board, is, are there any questions or discussion regarding these 22 certified recommendations? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. The motion carries and it is unanimous. Do I hear a motion to approve two administrative recommendations for the 2012-2013 school year? Madam Chair, I move that the board accept the superintendent's request to accept two administrative recommendations. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bagman. We now have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. And we now have a second. And are there any questions or discussion, Ms. Board? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries and it is unanimous. Do I hear a motion regarding employee A? I move the board accept the superintendent's request to withdraw her recommendation that employee A be terminated from employment based on we now have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? 
Okay, are there any questions or discussion at this time? Thank you, Mr. Horn. Okay, at this time, we now have a motion and a second on the floor. Were there any other comments or questions? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed? The motion carries, it is unanimous with one recusal. You'll note that, Cheryl. Okay, at this time, we turn to 10.0, which is continuing business. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Talley for our school updates. And Dr. Talley, take the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, it's my pleasure this evening to bring before you Superintendent Jan Fidlin from Midway Elementary School, who will share with you the great things that the Midway Mustangs have going on at their school. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good The 2011-2012 school year finds Midway Elementary at the beginning of an exciting new phase in its history. A new administrative team and a dynamic faculty and staff have committed themselves to leading as one as they meet the needs of each and every Midway Mustang. While Midway has won numerous awards and honors over the years, including multiple red carpet awards, the prestigious National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence, and most recently, an 11th consecutive Palmetto Gold Award, the Midway community is excited to continue its journey into 21st century learning by aligning the school's mission and vision with that of Lexington One. The following illustrates a number of ways MES leads, MES learns, and MES lives. First, Midway is blessed with an incredible staff of teacher leaders. They are committed to practicing the four C's of collaboration, communication, creativity, and critical thinking as they strive to model lifelong learning for not only their students, but one another. Midway teachers are not the only leaders in the school. Students step up every day and play an important role in the success of the school. From safety patrol and recycling teams to flag helpers and the morning news team, student leaders are hard at work throughout the school day, helping to make Midway Elementary a great place to lead and learn and live. Midway Elementary students and staff are also leaders in the community. From the annual Veterans Day Assembly and Parade to hosting a Red Cross blood drive, Midway is taking a leadership role in its community. Midway Elementary is also a great place to learn, and students and teachers make use of the latest technology and teaching strategies to ensure every child is challenged to reach his or her full academic potential. The recent addition of a class set of iPads has brought a wave of excitement for learning into the classrooms at Midway. Teachers have enjoyed checking out these tools and engaging their learners on a whole new level. Technology at Midway is not limited to the iPad, however. <coughs> Here, third grade French immersion students are using their language skills to explain to some French-speaking visitors what they have learned by using the iPod Touch. Here's a third grader communicating with someone in a foreign country using Skype. Learning at Midway is not limited to the use of technology. Here, students are using movement to communicate what they have learned in their class. Another way MES learns is by continuing to adapt to the ever-changing needs of students. A dedicated team of individuals has undertaken the challenge of transforming the Media Center into a learning commons designed to host a variety of student-centered learning throughout the school day. Not only is Midway Elementary committed to leading and learning, we are dedicated to promoting healthy living as well. Recently, health screenings for employees were held. Mustangs in Motion raised money for playground improvements, but more importantly, got students and their family members together on the walking track for a great time. 
The Jump Rope for Heart event raised not only money, but heart rates, and was a big success. A number of Midway students and staff members participated in the recent Governor's Cup run. And in fact, a club called Girls on the Run continues to meet and encourages girls to get fit and stay fit. Always looking ahead, Midway Elementary is dedicated to excellence. Teachers are continually working to incorporate the gradual release model and other 21st century strategies in their classrooms. They're also participating in staff development in the six traits of writing and the leader in me, as well as preparing for the implementation of the Common Core State Standards, all the while embracing the expanded role technology has played in helping them meet the diverse needs of their students. Through collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and communication, the Midway Elementary School team is committed to leading, learning, and living.
our superintendent, our teachers, our administrators, certainly our students, our parents, and our very fine community for the support that we receive daily. And that's what enables us to make Lexington tomorrow a highly functional, highly functional school system. So that's a report that we sh should certainly all be very proud of. Thank you, Dr. Powell. We are so proud of that. The board, we were fortunate enough to be here when they gave the oral presentation. And I mean, it was just so heartwarming. And we know so much work went into that. And for those of you who are not familiar, this is a big deal. And as far as we can tell, we think we've got the highest score they've ever given. Is that correct? It's very rare, Madam Chair, for a team to um, commend a school district like ours and for us to have achieved six out of seven standards uh, at high function about the It was just a great day. Yeah, um, you know, in thinking in terms of this, I was here uh, to hear the report. Uh, to hear outside independent um, people, educators, people who know what they're talking about, give us this kind of rating and then to pick up the paper and read where uh, certain aspects of this community uh, and I'm talking about certain parties in the political side want to politicize this process and they want to make it something that's not. Uh, it just really, uh, I'll use a mild term, it irritates me. Um, people need to understand that this is not political, this is what drives this economy. There's an election coming up. I get so upset when I read about and all the say the Tea Party saying we've got an agenda, we're gonna cut it back. Well by God we're doing the right thing. We're educating children, as you said, global citizens, not for Lexington County, global. Uh, and I get so upset when I hear these people who want to go back to the three R's. That's not the world we live in today. And to think it is, is putting your head in the sand and thinking backwards. And that's not the kind of school board people we need, and that's not the kind of district I want for my grandchildren, much less my children. Um, I think we need to get out and start talking to a few people because folks, it's headed. And if we sit back, we're going to lose the momentum we have in this district, I promise you. It's happened in other parts of this this state and this country. We've got independent people who have stepped up to the plate and said, you are the microcosm of what we want, what needs to be an education system. And it's not us telling ourselves that. It's somebody from New Mexico that know us. So we're doing the right thing, we're committed to that right thing, and we need to continue that. The only way to continue that is, is to be very, very selfish about who sits on this board and the reasons they sit on this board. Voters will decide that. If we let the Tea Party people walk in, guess what? Let's move to Alabama, folks. Because that's what you'll get. So I just want to get off my soapbox, but I, it just irritates me to no end when I read the state newspaper this morning and I see what's happening. I see what happens to other boards not so far away, Jan. I've seen it. Um, so, my point is, you need to start calling this people. November's not far away. It's not far away, I promise. I'll show that. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Talley. And if you'll tell the principals and all the teachers and staff, I, you know, just how appreciative we are of them. We're really looking forward to getting a written report. And uh, we hope we get some media coverage about that because it's just it's slow about standing. Anyway, let's keep moving. Let's go to the second reading of the calendar. We're on 10.2. This is the 2013-2014 calendar. And again, I'll turn it over to Dr. Talley. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tonight, I do bring for second reading to you um, the recommendation from the District Council Committee for the 2013-2014 academic school calendar. And this time, bringing for action. Board, this is an action item. Do I hear a motion to approve the 2013-2014 school calendar as presented? So moved. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion or questions regarding this calendar? I think it's a really good calendar. Your, your committee did a nice job on it. 
Um, let's take a vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries and it is unanimous. We now have a calendar, 2013-2014. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Butler for a fiscal services update. Board, this is only presented as information. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Woodward. Last month, I gave an update on the state's proposed funding approved by the uh, House. It had a base student cost of $2,000 per student, which is way below the $2,790 for a coordinated budget control board should be funded. You know, the House says that they are increasing school funding by $152 million. That's only EFA. If you look at the overall money coming from the state, it's only $33 million statewide. If you go to the South Carolina Department of Education's website, you see that's an additional $2.4 million for less than one. Uh, that will not even cover the mandated increases as outlined in the House version, uh, not even to mention the other inflationary required uh, increases that we have. Last week, the Senate Finance Committee received a briefing from Frank Rainwater, and he is the Chief Economist of the State Board of Economic Advisors. Currently, there is a $225 million surplus in general fund revenue collections for the current fiscal year, which is June 30th, 2012. $535.2 million in new recurring revenue for fiscal year 2012-2013, and $175.8 million projected revenue growth for fiscal year 2014. In EIA, there is a $17.7 million surplus in the current fiscal year, $42.5 million in new reoccurring revenue for this year 2012-13 and a $19.1 million estimated revenue growth for this year 2014. Remember the House is only proposing increasing public school funding by $33 million statewide for this year 2012-13. The Senate Finance Committee is continuing to work this week and the full Senate Finance Budget Debate will start next week. The Senate Floor Debate will start May 15th, and the last day of the legislative session is scheduled for June 7th. So hopefully the Senate will be able to allocate more funds to public schools than what the House has. Uh, locally, uh, after several discussions with the county, our local tax bill assessments are up by 3.6%, and that will generate uh, around about $2 million additional funding for us this upcoming year. So due to the Senate Finance Budget Debate not finishing with their deliberations, until sometime in early May, we feel it would be better to delay the first reading of the budget until May 22nd. We feel that we have a better idea of what funding will come from the state at that time. And it just seems to make sense to wait until we have more accurate information available. So that means first reading of the budget will be May 22nd. The second reading will be June 5th. And the third reading will still be uh, June 26th. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. Well, I just think that, um, one thing is really important for us to remember that our current funding um, uh, from the state is at the 1999 school year level. And you need to remember that we're in 2012. So we are way behind um, where we should be in terms of educational funding. And um, I, I just, I'm very concerned that people don't realize that. And, lose that, that point. Uh, any increase that we are seeing would not move us up to the 2012 level of funding at all. Um, no. So we need to keep that in mind. And actually even if they go to the 2012, it won't bring us to, to the year 2001 funding level. So, so we we'll still be 11 years from now. A decade. Um, over a decade. This would be a century level. Well, that's true. That's a positive and very I do want to say, I resent the use of the term increase. It is not an increase. Before the economic downturn, we were at about $2,400. The last time was about $2,520. Yeah, about $2,520. This is a replacement of lost funds. It is not an increase. Oh, absolutely. It will not be an increase until we go beyond the $2,520. It's a wrong term to use. It's a replacement of lost funds. Yeah, if we were funded at the 2790 level, we should be funded. That would be an additional $20 million each year for our district. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Any other comments or questions for Mr. Butler? Thank 
Mr. Schomburg? Well, another issue we have is we're supposed to get races in the form of 2% of all the state superintendent education rules to give to our teachers and our staff. But at this time, I believe we've got about a little over maybe 1.5% increase, and then increase from the state in fact of what's been taken away versus what was given. And you're talking about the national funding or the salary schedule? Well, the funding. That's probably pretty close, yeah. All right, well, the issue here is not only, as you had mentioned, not only do we have the rates that we're supposed to give our employees, but we're also going to have the increase in unemployment, health insurance, workers' comp, all these other issues and costs that go up annually. And the only place we have to go to get these additional revenues are on the back of businesses in this district. We no longer have the capability of taxing homes or homeowners for revenue. The only place this board can get revenue is off of business. Because of that, businesses in each and every district are limited in how much more they can pay. Any industry or any business can only pay so much, and we can no longer continue to put all these extra costs on the back of businesses in this district. Mr. Swanson, and Thirty thirty-five. 
And that bill would allow districts to establish their academic calendars based on the current statutory term of 180 days of instruction or an equivalent number of instructional hours, so the equivalent of 180 days. The subcommittee reported out favorably on House Bill 3236, which is a bill that amends the compulsory education requirement. It actually adds the South Carolina Association of Christian Schools um, and similar organizations or parochial denominations or church-related schools um, to the uh, requirements for attendance and uh, compulsory education requirements. The subcommittee also reported out favorably Senate Bill 1267. That's the proposed school district choice and open enrollment program bill. Uh, this bill establishes school choice and open enrollment within a public school system and provides the criteria for sending or receiving school to school district. It's been amended um, to allow local school boards rather than the State Board of Education to determine the capacity of the school and it would eliminate the office of school choice at the State Department of Education. We'll go to the full Senate Education Committee tomorrow. The House of Representatives has returned from a two-week-long furlough and there the House Ways and Means Committee should debate
teachers have uh, 10 days after the issuance of a notification. So we will be asking them back by April the 30th. Now, one thing that um, you may have received questions about, middle school teachers involved in rezoning and more transfers um, you know, for a rural language initiative. This Friday, along with their contract, they will receive their 10 days areas that we cannot make those determinations yet. They may have a two be determined, but I say about 90%. So just to inform you that that information is going out. Uh, That'll be like the new assignments and the memo. Yes, they're going to know their location. Uh, the memo going out to the employee will state that more detailed information about grade level and area assignments will come a little bit later, but at least they'll know what can Okay, thank you, Ms. Walker. Any questions or comments for Ms. Walker? Hearing none, we'll move to 10.6, which is an operations report from Mr. Salter. And a board, board again, this is presented as information of Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Dr. Woodward, uh, it's time to bring you some pictures of our construction projects that are ongoing. Um, these are projects funded through the 2008 bond referendum, uh, voted on by our public. Uh, we'll start tonight with River Bluff High School, uh, located on Polygonal Road. You see uh, the high school uh, just in a month's time has really uh, changed significantly. Uh, we have a lot more roof structure in place, um, and you know, the facade is really taking shape around the front area there. They've done a lot of grading and work on the front parking lot areas. Um, just to orient you, the main entry is, is here. Um, you have your office and guidance areas, um, administration guidance on this area here. Your learning commons is in this back area with some art classrooms. On the right hand side, we have our, our fine arts and athletics and uh, cafeteria spaces. And on the left hand side, we have uh, the classroom wings, um, which you'll see a closer look at here in a minute. This is a rear uh, view of the uh, building as well. The center area here will be a, an outdoor learning uh, space, a courtyard area uh, for student activity and learning. Um, Colonial Road actually runs kind of catty corner of this um, here, and you can see there, there's a lot of uh, trees protecting the, the view of the building. And, and so from Colonial Road, you really don't get a direct advantage of the school. Uh, that's, that's intentional. Uh, the cones that you see out on Colonial Road, all that road work out there, um, we anticipate getting that uh, final paving done on Colonial Road in May. Uh, we're waiting on some work from DOT. Before we do that final pages, but that will really take shape um, over the next month or so. This is the lower end of the site um, where the athletic fields uh, are starting to take shape. You see on the right hand side there are track. Um, there's actually curving that's been put down the track. Uh, we have a baseball field here, softball here, there'll be a practice field up here, um, and our, our main uh, competition football um, stadium up here. You see some parking areas taking shape. Um, and this actually is a student parking area here, and there'll be some tennis courts down here. Um, what you'll notice is a lot of green space uh, still left on the site. Uh, a large amount of um, the trees were left on the site intentionally, um, and there are some wetlands that, you know, all wetlands are protected as well on the site. This is a view of the front of the building. Um, looks much like some of the renderings we saw early on. Here's a, a shot of the interior you're looking out. Um, this is actually standing in the secured foyer uh, that we have in our, our new designs. Uh, this is a view kind of looking down the center commons of the, of the building. Um, down in the end, on the lower end there, you have the gymnasium and all. It's kind of hard to see that. This is the main um, corridor of the hallway there for the building. This is a, a view of one of the classroom wings, the first floor of one of the classroom wings. And this is an, another classroom wing. You can see some of the roof structure starting to take shape there um, on the second floor. This is a view um, looking down into the uh, cafeteria space. And this is actually inside the cafeteria. Over here on the left hand side is the serving lines and then on the right side just kind of cut off here there's a um, 
small stage area. Um, she knows a lot of natural light. Um, that's very intentional, part of our um, certification. This is a view of the gymnasium area, and again, you see some natural light coming into that, that space. Another shot of that, of that gymnasium area, actually looking out towards the center hallway there. Uh, this is a view of the uh, Performing Arts Theater. Uh, it's designed uh, just like the uh, flow pack that's in Lexington High School. It looks, it looks a lot smaller right now when all the walls get up and the seats get in there will be exactly the same size. Moving on to Bedlam Middle School. This is uh, our middle school that will be opening up um, actually across the road there at Jenny Lane. Um, be opening in August. I'm pleased to tell you tonight that we had an inspection there this morning from all the school facilities that inspects our school buildings as they're constructed. Um, they did an overhead inspection there this morning and uh, we got a favorable inspection report so the progress there is um, moving forward as we would expect. Um, just to orient you on the site, this is I-20 and this is Jenny Lane. Of course the building is here. The main student drop-off will be um, occurring in this area here. Um, bus and, and service entry vehicles will be coming on this side here. And of course the elementary school medical and elementary is um, adjacent to the property here. This is a view in front of the school building. Um, canopies there um, taking shape. Um, just a side view of the building. I think last month when we showed this picture there was no um, windows in place and you see a lot of that work is taking shape. Um, a lot different than they did a month ago. This is the uh, front entry, the main office area. Um, a lot of storage going on there right now, but it's, it's starting to take shape. This is one of the collaborative spaces um, in the middle school. Uh, the wings are set up and call those houses. And this is an area where students can spill out of the classroom spaces and um, do group work projects and, and really collaborate. And this is another uh, collaborative space, one of the other houses. These are both on the first floor. Um, this is a, a view of the, from the second floor looking down into the gymnasium. Right now there's a lot of material stored there for the um, uh, flooring that's, that's going in across the building. Uh, this is a view of the learning commons on the second floor. A lot of, again, natural light in the space. This is a view of the Little Theater. Uh, this is a Little Theater's design, uh, very similar in size to our theaters at our other middle schools uh, that we have in the district. And then this is a view of our uh, cafeteria space, uh, again from the second floor, which you can see uh, the workers are starting to work on the terrazzo, these, these lines that are in the floor, the design of the terrazzo, and they'll come back in and pour that um, over the next few weeks and, and grind that material to make the floor. Um, and those are the pictures I have for you tonight. I'll to answer any questions for you. Do you have any questions or comments for you? I hope Dr. Pitts ain't been mad about being on the spot, but I think he went to an ice cream social or something for oh. medical in the middle. Uh, yes. And yes. do you want to share? I think. Yeah, uh, the guy, uh, the speakers they were talking about, they meant to. State and, uh, and they said they had never seen that much turnout come to an event like that. And, uh, it was. I pulled into the parking lot and they went to the spot to be at. And uh, it was a great event. Uh, I think the citizen and the parents there, they, I think they're very uh, enthused about what's coming. And I am too because uh, my daughter is about to start next year. So. And our middle schools are so full.
for the 2012-2013 Integrated English Language Course <coughs> K-5 Textbook Adoption. The committee recommends adopting the Hope and Mifflin Cohort South Carolina Journeys, grades five, K-5. Uh, it's important that you know that this series is aligned to the current South Carolina standards as well as the Common Core State Standards. All the materials uh, in the series are available online free of charge as part of the adoption. There is no cost involved in the full implementation, including continuing, continuing professional learning throughout the life of adoption. I do want to take a, a personal privilege and thank Libby Carnahan, uh, who chaired uh, the review. Uh, she was uh, diligent uh, to ensure that the review was very thorough. I can assure you that they left no stone unturned in reviewing the materials, uh, and we seek approval on this recommendation. Thank you, Dr. Talley. Do I hear a motion to approve the Eng English Language Arts textbook adoption as presented? Madam Chair, I move that the board approve the proposed textbook adoption for integrated English Language Arts grades K through 5, South Carolina Journeys, Houston Midland and Park Board as presented school year 2012-2013. And we have a motion to have a second? Second. Great. Are there any questions or comments regarding this new textbook? I do think it's exciting that we're going to be able to uh, lend that onto the iPads. We're very excited about uh, the technology that comes with the adoption. I think any time we can do that, it's just great. Okay. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? And the motion carries. It is unanimous. At this time, we'd like to go to 11.2, but which board again is an action item, a student travel request, and I'll turn it back over to Dr. Talley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Tonight, I have um, seven student travel requests. I reviewed each request and their compliance with board policy, and I see you. Okay, board, you have been presented with those before. <coughs> Do I have a motion to approve the student travel request as presented by Dr. Talley? Sure. Do I have a second? second. Okay. Any questions or comments board, regarding this travel request? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. It is unanimous. Board, 12.0 um, are items for your information only. I have item 13.0, which is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? No. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, please stand up. If y'all can just bring those sheets up here, we'll sign up.